You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news starts now. Okay, we have breaking news we've been following this morning out of Atlanta, where police say a member of the rap group Nappy Roots was kidnapped from his own brewery and then shot. Then had to try to escape. Ariana Manis has the details on how he did get away and who investigators are looking for now. Police have not confirmed which member of the group was involved, and at this time, police have not arrested any other suspects involved. Now, police, they tell us they were initially called to the brewery around 11 p.m. as the restaurant was closing. They say first the suspects robbed a customer inside of the parking garage. They then went into the restaurant and forced one of the owners into his car at gunpoint. They drove off with the owner in the car and headed toward Tateville, according to police. Now, the owner was able to escape and knocked on someone's door for help, but not before he was shot. And the leg. Now the victim was taken to the hospital and is currently in stable condition and police they tell me that they're searching for at least two suspects. Back to you. Thank you, Ariana. Sticking with your 11 minutes of nonstop news, here's what's happening now. Jury deliberation is set to start today for a man charged with killing a seven-year-old girl. Closing arguments wrapped up yesterday for Daquan Reed. Prosecutors say he's the one who fired the shot that killed Kennedy Maxey. Reed was robbed in the Phipps Plaza parking lot back in December 2020. Prosecutors say as he was leaving, he fired shots and one of the bullets hit and killed Maxey. The man charged in a Memorial Day boat crash in Savannah was just indicted. This crash left five people dead. According to USA Today, Mark Stengel was indicted on 10 counts of first degree homicide by a vessel as well as boating under the influence. A passenger in his boat and four members of the Leffler family died when two boats collided on Wilmington River. The father, Chris Leffler, previously taught and coached at Kings Ridge Christian School in Alpharetta. Governor Brian Kemp is trying to get a subpoena thrown out so he doesn't have to appear in front of a Fulton County special grand jury today. It's investigating former President Donald Trump's attempts to overturn Georgia's 2020 election results. As of right now, there is no sign that Kemp is a target of the investigation. Continuing your 11 minutes of nonstop news, the CDC is promising major changes. It admits they did not handle everything right during the COVID response. Molly Oak reports from headquarters in Atlanta to walk us through what the overhaul will look like. The director of the public health agency says it needs to re-earn the public's trust. That's the goal of this overhaul, which the CDC calls a reset. In April, the CDC's director called for an in-depth review of the agency, which resulted in the announced changes. That does include internal staffing moves, steps to speed up data releases, and creating an office of equity to diversify CDC staff. The plan also includes revamping the CDC's website so data and information guidelines are all easier for us to find. Guys. This morning, a Metro Atlanta family is putting out a warning as they call for help that you could expect to pay a lot more, thousands of dollars more if you call for an ambulance. The Todd family had just started to recover from one of the most frightening moments a parent could experience. Their two week old baby boy Lawrence just suddenly stopped breathing and went into cardiac arrest. The way I described it to the doctors at the ER is they went Casper the ghost on me, he just went completely pale. Thankfully, doctors were able to save him, but the family's relief was short lived because they were hit with a $3,000 ambulance bill just because days before that emergency, National Ambulance dissolved their contract with Anthem Blue Cross Blue Shield. They're worried other families could run into the same problem. So if you fear you could be in the same boat, call your insurance company. Today, Cobb County's Board of Education will talk about increasing bus drivers pay by more than $5 an hour. Right now, they make $19.75. The raise would bump them up to $25 an hour. Cobb, like many school districts in the metro, is dealing with a bus driver shortage right now. Recently, district leaders told us they were looking to recruit about 200 additional drivers. The Atlanta Hawks are ready to hit the hardwood. The Hawks open the season at home against the Houston Rockets. That game tips off October 19th. Some other notable games will be the team's rematch against the Heat on Martin Luther King Jr. Day. On St. Patty's Day, they'll welcome the reigning champs, the Golden State Warriors. Chesley? All right, we're looking at uh, temperatures by noon. Still on the cool side, 78 degrees. We'll have a few uh, isolated showers around the area. Some embedded thunderstorms are certainly possible by the time we get to the 3 o'clock hour when a lot of the kids are getting out of school. Temperatures will get up to 82 degrees. I think that's where we'll top out today. By 6 o'clock as you're driving home, we're looking at temperatures right around 80 degrees. Still with those scattered showers with a few embedded thunderstorms. Winds will be on the light side today out of the east at about 5 miles per hour or less. 
Before we go, we want to send a happy 95th birthday to former First Lady Rosalind Carter. You're looking at video of former President Jimmy Carter and his wife in Plains, Georgia this weekend, where she was born in 1927. During this birthday milestone, the Carter Center says it's celebrating Mrs. Carter's impact on mental health, women's rights, and vaccine education. 95 years young. That's beautiful to see. They've been married 75 years. That's Ooh. goals right there. Yeah. No doubt about it. All right, a lot going on in traffic. The rain we're watching for you. We'll keep it all there for you on 11live.com.